New Testament, their names was not known before. Was after was put Mark, Luke, John, Matthew. You understand? So my point here is, what I believe, I believe Paul, when he was going around killing Christians, the true followers of Jesus, he noticed they are firm upon their belief. So what he did, he pretended to become a believer in Jesus just to corrupt them from inside when he knew he could not defeat them by killing them. That's what I believe. Do you know why I believe that? Because the same thing happened in the Muslim history, in the Islamic history, by someone called, um, uh, what's his name? Ibn Saba. Okay. Ibn Saba, he was a Jewish chief, Yemeni. When they see Islam is strong and the Muslims were strong, he claimed that he was a Muslim to try and he started changing the teaching of Islam. Okay. But he was exposed, mm. alhamdulillah. I hear that. I think, too concrete, I know it's called and yeah. I need to go. But can I ask you something before please you go? Do, okay. Do. The New Testament. Yes. Is it the word of God? Yes. So Mark and Luke and Matthew and John were inspired by God? Yes. Can you show me where Mark or Luke or Matthew claimed they were inspired by God? Say again. Can you show me where in Mark's gospel, or Luke's gospel, or Matthew's gospel, or John's gospel, they claim they were inspired by God? They didn't. Okay, that's good. Imagine, sorry, okay, Let's give you an example. Imagine I write this book. Yes. You see? I never claimed, I, was, I never made a claim my book was inspired by God. Do you think you have a right to claim my book to be inspired by God, even I've, I never claimed it? Break that down for me again. Okay. You said you wrote this book. I wrote this book. I yes. never claimed my book to be inspired by God. Yes. Okay. Do you think you have a right to come after me and claim that my book was inspired by God, even though I never made a claim for it? I get the argument. Yeah. And in answer to that, that specific argument, yeah. if that's what happened in the Bible, I would say yes, that's wrong. Okay. If you read the John, John's gospel, he's very clear on why he wrote this book. Okay. And he says the reason why I wrote this book is that, that you may know who he is, know who Jesus is, okay. and in him have life in his name. Okay. So very clearly he stated the reason why the book exists. But does it mean he was inspired by God? The whole of the New Testament, the whole of the Bible was inspired by God. But uh, come on, he need, uh, what I'm saying, like now, there is a book was written about people's biography. Yes. Like in Islam, we have Ibn Kathir's book which was written about Prophet Muhammad's biography. Yes. Doesn't mean because speaking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who was, when I say divine, I want to use this word, divine doesn't mean he's God. Mean he was a prophet of God, who God gave him a revelation. Doesn't mean because he spoke about him, therefore that book must be inspired. So you telling me because John said, to, he wrote that uh, gospel mm -hmm. in order for you to know about Jesus, okay, and to know uh, salvation lies on him, mm -hmm. okay, doesn't not prove that he was inspired by God because they never made a claim. Okay. Except, I can help you with that, except Paul. Paul said all scriptures were inspired by God. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the Christian scholars will tell you doesn't apply to New Testament. When, when Paul said that, we're speaking about the Old Testament. Okay. Yes, because when Paul said that, Mark and Luke and Matthew John wasn't written. Agreed? Yes. Agreed. So, so my point here is, look, in order for, for us to you know a book to be from God, firstly, the claim has to be there. I cannot come 200 years later and make a claim for it. That's not enough the claim. Second challenge. That's why the Quran make claim Al Rahman wa Allah al Quran, the most merciful, to the Quran, but also challenge the people to bring something of the Quran in its eloquency, in its prophecy, in its legislation, in the in the in its uh, uh, the guidance that's given in the Quran. But the Quran doesn't stop there. The Quran makes future statements. For example, the Quran says Sorry for taking your time. No, no, I don't know good. which one taking time. Well. Do, I'm good. I'm but we beat you in football. It's That's all right. I'm really enjoying the discussion. No, definitely. Thank same. you very much. So what I would say the Quran doesn't stop there. The Quran goes on to say that this book will be preserved. Mm. So imagine someone who is known in history to be a sound person, mm. Prophet Muhammad. If he was a liar, he would not make some bold statements. One of them, the Quran will be preserved. And now you and I, in the 21st century, can we verify this claim? Yes, we can. How? Let us, all of us, burn our scriptures. Burn it. The only scripture will remain with us is the Quran. Do you know why? Because hundreds of millions of people memorize the Quran word for word, letter for letter. For example, now, everyone know ABC, the alphabet. I can change it by writing it. But everyone said no, ABC, no A or C. But also, the Muslim children, not the Muslim scholars, we can bring the Muslim, Muslim children to bring back the Quran in a written form. But we know the Bible is, is one known. I'm not trying to disrespect you. 
is one known, no one more has the Bible, the mm -hmm. New Testament, mm -hmm. even one gospel, mm -hmm. even the scholars, you know? So this statement Prophet Muhammad made, who, which he conveyed from Allah mm -hmm. 1,400 years ago, that this book will be preserved. Also 1,400 years ago, within the Quran, Allah said this book will be made easy for the people to memorize it. And we can observe it right now. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of the Quran, claim to be from God, doesn't stop there. Go to challenge mankind, doesn't stop there. Make both statements. Mm -hmm. And without any doubt, yes, I believe there's some truth in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I think for us, ultimately, it's about who we think Jesus is, ultimately. So I believe he's a Messiah. Okay, what does yes. that mean? Okay, a okay. A Messiah came from the word Masaha. Mm -hmm. Masaha means someone who is to travel around. Mm -hmm. Okay? Masaha al Arab means. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Even the Messiah means the chosen one. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Uh, the, anointed. the anointed one. Yeah, yes. anointed one. Yes. But there was not only Jesus, mm -hmm. there was the people who was the Messiah too, mm -hmm. according to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. They were anoint, uh, uh, the anointed one as well. Mm -hmm. Okay? But what I would say to you, look, if you notice, all the prophets and messengers from the Old Testament, mm -hmm. mainly they focus on God, mm -hmm. the Father, which mm -hmm. you call the Father, yeah? But Jesus came, who was the true prophet, the Christians made him, he focused only on himself. Then who came after? Prophet Muhammad who said, no, is God. So logic speak, logically speaking, the prophet that goes in line with the previous prophet and messenger is Prophet Muhammad. But Jesus, according to Christians, stands out because only about him, about him. You know, I mean, look, when Jesus said to the Christians, your God is the father who you worship. Okay. He didn't say your God is the father and I and the Holy Spirit that you worship. He accepts only the Father. Who, are you now using the, the gospel that you think is corrupted to justify your No, I, I'm using it and guess that which you believe in it. Say again. But I, remember, I said to you, I believe there's some truth in it. So how do you know what's true and what's not true? Okay, that's a good point. Firstly, we have intellectual, we have intellect. That we know that contradictory things in the real life doesn't exist. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. No, okay, no, yeah. I agree. S secondly, I use the Quran and a prophetic tradition which I can establish came from God as a criteria because one of the names of the Quran is Muhaymin. Muhaymin mean, mean criterion over the scriptures that came before. Mm. So it will tell us which one is true, which one is a falsehood. Mm. But even intellectually, like you know, intellectually we know God has no God. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. So if Jesus is true God, why he said, I'm going to my father and your father to my God and your God. Where does it say that? Here. Let's go. Where does it say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite interesting. Hold this here for me, please, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to show you this one. I'll cut for mine as well. I'm going to have my bag on me. Oh, you left your bag where? Yeah, at home. With my Bible in it. <laughs> Are you, uh, uh, even me, if you see my Bible, <laughs> you think, oh, this guy, he has a manuscript. <laughs> I'm going to... John 20, 17. Don't not... You know this problem? Yeah, all, all this rubbish. All lie, this rubbish, man. <laughs> okay, Jesus said, do not hold on to me, mm -hmm. for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Mm -hmm. Go and send to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mm -hmm. But we just agreed, God doesn't have God. Agreed. So if Jesus is God, he should have no God. Agreed. The fact he has God, he cannot be God. Fair. That's, yeah, fair. You see, fair. that's why Allah sent the Quran, that what Jesus said, the true Messiah, Ya Bani Israel, Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum. All the Israelites worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Mm. You know, that's what Allah said in the Quran. And that goes in line. Also, what, it is very interesting in the Bible when Jesus said, Mark 13, 32, no one knows the day and the hour, mm. not even the angels in the heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Mm. And we know God knows everything all the times. Okay? That statement is very similar to what Prophet Muhammad conveyed from Allah. Mm. Allah said, Yes, Allah فيما أنت من ذك من ذكرها إلى ربك منتهاها إنما أنت منذر من يخشاها. الله سيدي أعطيك بعض أول وبي استبلش. The meaning of the verse, yeah. No one knows it too except Allah. You see, your all your job is to warn people and guess it. So our mighty messenger, the true Messiah, Jesus said that the knowledge of the hour goes back to the Father, which you call the Father, and we say it's Allah because the term Father is very similar in Arabic language to الرب. It was used in Aramaic, which is Ab. Ab, similar to Rabb, because Allah took care of us, raised us, so we call him the Father. But people took it as a literal. Okay. Is that clear, bro? 
get that. All right, I know we're. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving me your time. You Can I give you a book to read, please? I've got a Quran at home. No, it's not the Quran, this one. Okay. This right, one, a very right, special book. Okay, give me the meaning of Islam. Yeah. Take it as a gift. Oh. Bro, it was a nice discussion with you. Take care of yourself. With beauty of football. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, man. Take care, Take care yourself. Thank you. A very interesting conversation they just had. Um, Old Testament aside, if you guys believe most of you that watch our videos, believe that the New Testament is corrupted. Do you ever agree with anything that comes in the New Testament or everything you just push aside and just don't want to listen to it? I'm curious. Otherwise, this was easy to understand. I hope you, you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. If you have something to say, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be more than glad to read your kind comments. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.